R. L. Stein's Goosebumps books don't exactly lend themselves to feature films. The stories themselves are just too short, and to adapt multiple stories into one film would essentially just be remaking the 90s TV series with a higher budget, when I think we all know that that series cannot be improved upon. Your beautiful hands! Beautiful hands! Having said that, what Sony and Scholastic did with the 2015 film is genius in its simplicity. Rather than simply adapting certain books from the series, the film takes place in the same universe as our own, in which the Goosebumps books hold a special place in the hearts of all young people that remember them, and R.L. Stein is a household name because of them. Off the bat, it's the best way to approach such an adaption. Rather than try and make the audience take the content of the books seriously, difficult to say the least, director Rob Letterman embraces the legacy of the books as a whole. The story follows teenage Zack Cooper moving to a new town with his mother, already intentionally or otherwise mimicking the opening of 80% of the books, who soon discovers he is living next door to the legendary R.L. Stein, whose books he grew up reading. When Zack accidentally releases the classic Goosebumps monsters from the pages of their magical manuscripts, he has to work with the crotchety old Stein, his teenage daughter Hannah, and zany comic relief Champ to return them to the pages before it's too late. Hardly Christopher Nolan's Memento, a movie I have not seen, but a simple enough way for our characters to interact with some of the various iconic monsters and villains from the books. With any film featuring teenage heroes and aimed at a younger audience, there's the risk the humour will come off as cringeworthy, but the dialogue here is well written and subtle, and doesn't come off as a forced attempt at humour. It's fun to watch protagonist Zack thrown together with the irritating but endearing champ and his romance with the sardonic Hannah fortunately doesn't get in the way of the adventure. However, the real draw is Jack Black as R.L. Stein, portrayed with just as much subtlety as you would expect from the guy in School of Rock, and it's very entertaining to see Stein, bitter, cantankerous, fiercely protective of his daughter, and jaded through all his nightmarish creations, forced to work with his daughter's friends. However grounded in reality it may be, you get a compelling insight to the man that could bring such terrifying creatures into life. But it's these creatures that make Goosebumps, so how are they treated on the big screen? Slappy the Dummy receives the most exposure and serves as a main antagonist, opening Stein's manuscripts and rallying the various creatures in an all-out chaos ensuing assault on the town. He's also completely obsessed with Stein, referring to him as Papa and resenting that he's been neglected and left in a manuscript for so long. It's a very interesting take. I believe the real R.L. Stein said that Slappy was a fun character to write, and here he's a lot of fun to watch. He's not as scary as much as he is a massive dick, trying his best to cause as much destruction and chaos as possible. Given his iconic status within the series, I'm glad they took the time to establish his character and not just make him a mindless menace. That's essentially what they did with the rest of the monsters. Besides Slappy, the monsters that feature in the film seem to have been chosen on face value, and I mean face value. The giant praying mantis from Shocker on Shock Street looks identical in the film as it does in the Tim Jacobus cover art, despite the fact that in that particular story the mantis is actually just an animatronic in a theme park visited by two children who turn out to be robots. Spoilers. The titular aliens from Revenge of the Body Squeezes appear as Slappies and Forces, and they're from a special edition Give Yourself Goosebumps story that served as a sequel to a story from the Goosebumps 2000 series. Yet the haunted mask is regulated to a blink and you'll miss it cameo, and Monster Blood doesn't even make an appearance. It's not that it derails the plot, not every horror can get the same treatment Slappy does, but they definitely could have been more creative with how some of the monsters were utilised. Throughout the non-stop chases and the wisecracks and the faux terror, what you're left with is a film that is that much more entertaining because it knows how much to draw from the source material. It's no fan film, and it doesn't take books about talking dummies or giant blob monsters too seriously, but still captures the appeal of the original books. The danger presented to our characters is ridiculous, but just like with the books, you're willing to put that aside because it's so fast-paced and engaging. Watching along, you can tell where R.L. Stein himself would have put the cliffhanger chapter endings to keep you going. If you read Goosebumps as a child, you'll revel at the idea of that absurd world opening up into ours, and if you've never even heard of them, Jack Black plays R.L. Stein with so much over-the-top personality, it's very easy to believe he's a fictional character. 
It's not a perfect film. You feel the tension, but no real danger, and older viewers may be annoyed there weren't scary moments throughout. Some diehards will be annoyed my iconic horrors didn't get better representation. But it would be difficult, perhaps scarily so, to make a better adaption of the Goosebumps series. Viewer, don't beware. Three and a half headless ghosts out of five.